in all humility, your excellency. We celebrate you. We love you. We bless you. It is an honor having you. Now, Kitaka to the Nubani 6 p.m., we will do it. God Amen. bless you, madam. Thank you. And if you can put all your hands together and give a clap offering to Jehovah. It is Jehovah who is worth of worship. And it is Jehovah who is worth of praise. One more time, put your hands together and appreciate Jehovah, the mighty one of Israel, the king of Zion, the king of kings, and the lord of lords. You may be seated. Thank you very much. I want to take this opportunity to honor and give honor to who? Honor is due. Lamek Gojiri. The man God has raised for this generation. We celebrate you for the great work you have done. We want to thank you for taking care of our sister, the woman of God. It takes a strong man with a strong heart to stand by a strong woman and especially one who loves God and preaches. Thank you so much for being there, the angel of this house, the patron dad. I hear you've been called. May God increase you, honor you, and lift you all the days of your life. And to our mom, our evangelist, you know, many people have heard that voice over the radio over the TV and out there. When we were going for the general elections, I found you somewhere at the Kenyatta market leading down. I saw you there. I don't know what you are doing, but I saw you with your entrance. You are going around. But may God answer the prayers, even those that have not been answered. For the prayer of a fervent woman, a righteous woman, availeth much. Perhaps that is why we are here. May Jehovah bless you and honor you. To Bishop and my brother Kefa and your wife, I'm forever grateful because you have been there. And when we've been making the walk, I know how many times we met and what we spoke. And you have been there praying and this nation is being transformed by men and the women of God who have continued to be on their knees and to go beyond the boundaries, boundaries of church denomination affiliations to be able to bring the body of Christ together. Together with your wife, I honor you. God bless you and God honor you. And to the very many bishops who are here at the house of clergy, the leadership that have continued to put the wind under my sister's uh, when wind says when she was flying high, we know there was an arrow and there was an arrow who was there. And you are there. You are there. That is why today we can celebrate 17 years of ministry and 10 years of the church. Thank you, Governor, for coming. And thank you, our lady representative thank you for being here we are always blessed to have you in the churches our mp mweshimi wakwenya and let me observe all the protocols as they have been set by our mom here so that we can get to the place where we can speak the word of god that is where i am and of course i cannot go into the world without thanking God and bringing the greetings of a gift of God called His Excellency Regadi Gashagwa. This is a great man. A man of God that has been behind my ministry for 22 years. A man who will give his tracks and give everything so that I go to the crusades all over the place. I leave him for many days and he has never called me back. He always tells me, go, go girl, go do, go do what God has called you to do. 
and he always prays for me. I know many people, you just know him the way you hear people calling him. He's a really G, but he's a truthful man. And I pray for that man. No doubt, whoever keeps asking me, I don't know why they keep telling me to pray for my man. Why should I, who, who, which other man should I pray for? This man, I pray for him when he's asleep, when he's waking up, when he's sleeping. That is my duty, that is my responsibility. This I ask you and urge of you. Don't ask me to do what I was called to do and was made to do. That's my purpose, to pray for my man. Yes, that's why you see I'm a nga, I'm a simama. The confidence and the boldness you see in that man is because God is with him and God is protecting him. And he's going far. And so I also want to bring the greetings of His Excellency, the President of the Republic of Kenya, Dr. William Samoy Ruto. The President of the Republic of Kenya who loves God. And also from my sister, Her Excellency, Rachel Ruto. The greatest intercessor that lives on this planet. Please help me craft for this wonderful presidency that God has given to this nation. If you know that you are in Kenya, can you stand and craft and thank God for the presidency that God has given to us. For the Bible tells us we pray for those who are in authority. One more time, give God a crap offering as you take your seats. And I must introduce myself. There are those ones who just see me and hear me from the Facebook. I am Pastor Dokas Regal. And this is my greatest calling and the greatest title God gave me. I'm a servant of God, ordained. And I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I will spread it. I will pray. And I will speak about this God until you will not want to hear it anymore. Because he would have saved you and you will be spreading the word. That is what you will not be hearing me. You will be taking that word to the world. Amen. I am an ambassador in this kingdom. And that is why I'm Her Excellency, Pastor Dorcas Regali. But the greater one is Pastor. Because God called me first, and by grace, He gave me a space and a window where I can serve in government. I'm not a politician. I'm a woman of God. Called at such time as this to transform and change the life of the boy child. Those ones who have seen me, I am busy. And I'm not stopping. Until we get them from gutter, from the streets, we turn them from drinking, from alcohol, from bangi, from whatever they are taking. They get drunk with the Holy Spirit. For out there is the future church. Out there are the missionaries. And we are getting them from there. It is a mother who can be able to see a goodly child. And the goodly child was not the girl child. The goodly child was Moses. Because Miriam was still there. But they were going for the boy child. And they wanted to destroy a nation. Because he was the deliverer. Who knows at such time as this. That this alcohol. These drugs are going for a deliverer of Kenya. Who knows. And it took five women, five women, 
to get a revelation. And they stood up and changed the course of history. They changed everything about the Hebrew tribe. And things worked together for the good of a nation. It was Jacob who saw it. And she stood as a mother and risked her life for her good child. It was Miriam who followed to see where this child, who was in the floating in the river, well, will pick this brother of hers. It was a daughter of Pharaoh who knew this was a Hebrew child who was the father was seeking to kill, and she took. It was a two midwife, Zifra and Pua, who decided to rise up, and now we have the nation of Israel, delivered from Egypt and captivity turning around. And so we rise up as mothers in the nation, and things are going to change. It is our business. It is our time to rise up. Don't you remember in Genesis chapter 3, from verse 17 going down, that it was the woman and her offspring that were going to crush Satan and bring the kingdom of hell down. It was the woman. When the woman starts to understand her destiny, things change. For every man and every woman, even God, when he entered into this world, he came through a woman. There's no dispute about that. In this world, God came through a woman. Even if he was God, he decided it that way. And every woman who is sitting, wherever you are saying, sitting, just say amen and give a crap offering because it is your time. It is your time to arise and defend your children. It is time to arise and defend your family. It is time to, to arise and defend your nation. And this Africa will be different. We are not only going for the children in Kenya. We are crossing borders, as our sister is always saying. We are crossing borders to every country in Africa. And our children, we are getting them from the devil. And we are depopulating hell and populating heaven. That is our work. And every person who is here, you are not saved for anything else. You are saved to go outside and go beyond the boundaries. Go beyond the church. Go be beyond the four walls. And therefore, allow me to read Luke chapter 18, verse 8. Luke chapter 18, verse 8 says, I tell you, if God will see that they get justice and they get it spiritually. Let me read from there so that we are together. I tell you, can you read with me? I tell you, Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, we really, really find faith on the earth. May God bless his word. This was Jesus speaking to his disciples. After a woman has a, a story of a woman who had been disturbing the judge at midnight, she would come and persistently continue to ask for justice to be served to her and her family. This widow woman was very persistent. And this widow woman could be the church of today, what God wants us to be, a persistent church in prayer, a persistent church in faith. But Jesus concludes there and says, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on the face of the earth. And that is very sad. Speak to your neighbor, say that is very sad. Jehovah, the mighty one of Israel, the lion of the tribe of Judah, who had died and rose again, 
And who is God made man? He's looking at us, and before he leaves, he looks at the church. He was leaving, the body he was leaving behind. And he asks himself a question, and asks you a question as a church today. When I come back, will I find Or we are only find people who are very excited and desperately worshipping without knowledge. Because faith is everything. Reverend Waboji, <laughs> if you did not have faith, you would not have come this far. So faith is everything. And I want to speak about the church today. I look at our church today and I'm very surprised to see that the prophecy that was written in that Matthew and uh, Luke chapter 18 verse 8 is about to happen. People who are there, you want God to avenge you because there is something that has happened and there are people who are after you. You want vengeance to be done. You want prayers that you have offered about your family to be answered. You want the prayers about your business to be answered. You want the prayer about your relationships to be answered. You want the prayers about the economy to be answered. And Jesus says, it is nothing for God to answer all that. Speak to your neighbor, tell them, for God to do that is so possible. For there is nothing too hard for our God. To get a good job, to get a good house, it is not hard for God. It is so easy. In fact, the answer is, seek ye first the kingdom of God and its righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Actually, you don't need to work for them. They will be added unto you when you seek God. And I can tell you, as I stand here, I am a testimony that when you seek God, this God will add everything to you. I give testimony because we shall overcome them. By that, Blood of the Lamb, and in 1970s, I was living in a ghetto in Thika called Kiandutu. In 2023, August 20th, where am I now? Where am I now? I am here on an exalted altar, preaching God as Her Excellency Pastor Dokas Wanjiko Rigadi. So there is a God, let me tell the church today, there is a God who will lift you from nothing to something. There is a God when you don't have food, who will feed you? Sometimes we did not have food. <laughs> and there was a time, we did not have even food to eat. Not because we were not working. Things were very bad. Situations were so bad. That for three days we had not had any food. And we thought we were going to die. And a good Samaritan, a woman, just came carrying, you know, that Niria Shamavati. And it was carrying what we call Gekango. Maize only. And he brought, she brought that one plate to my mother. And when my mother got that plate, the iron sheet plate, I think you may know it. Many of them will not know it. That is what we used to use. And when she brought, my mother took it and she started to cry. 
and we wondered why she was crying. We were excited. We were going to eat. And we wanted to help her cry quickly. We, give, we get them food. So we all cried. We didn't know why she was crying. But our purpose for crying is we help her so that she can finish and give us food to eat. <laughs> and so she realized her eight children were still waiting. So she took a spoon and, give, and gave each one of us a spoon, a spoon on the hand and told us, you wait for my instructions. And when we got it, she told us to put in the mouth and chew. And also she was chewing. And she said, don't swallow until I tell you. We loved our mother, so we obeyed the instructions. And then she said, let's do this. Everyone remove and give Simon. She, he, he was our last boy. And he said he would die first, so let's give. My friends, it was the greatest temptation to disobey, but we did not disobey. So we gave our Simon. Our Simon is Evangelist Simon today. We didn't die. You can tell because I'm standing here. As a testimony, what God can do. When it comes to crossing, we did not have clothes. That is why many people, when you see me, you wonder why I'm passionate about God and zealous about his word. He has brought me from very far. We didn't have clothes. Sometimes we, when my dad died and things went south, one day we found ourselves, our clothes had been torn and all that. And there was a metal box, those big boxes that families used to have. And we went inside and collected each one of us, one of the father's shirt, and we wore. And that is what we used to wear from Sunday to Sunday. And that time, because we did not have, my mom did not have a job, we were working as maids. And we also went to farms and we'd work. And because we were mates, when people went to Sunday service like today, we would run to the river and remove these shirts, wash them and stay naked until they dried. There is a God who can change destinies. So when you start see me pray, when you see me break before God, please allow me to do it. I know why I do it. I have a reason, I have a purpose to do it. Because this God has brought me from very far. My mother was a prayerful woman. She prayed me into pastorship. I never wanted to be a pastor. That was not my, in line or even in my dream. I was working and serving as an usher in House of Grace. And my bishop and my father of faith is Bishop David Moravi, and I'm very proud of him. I've served under him for 22 years. Under him. And I don't go planting churches. I was never called to plant a church. People ask me, where is your church? So that we come. I tell them, come. My church is my father's church. Yes. And I'm very proud of my father. He has prayed for me together with Reverend Ronica for many years. And what you see is a byproduct of my mother, Virginia Aboy Kino, and my bishop, David Moravi, and Reverend Ronica Moravi. That is why you are eating the fruits of women and a man who has prayed me to this place, if you can clap for them. The church 
much of today I want to speak to you. Jesus was concerned about the church today. And he asked himself, when I come back, will the body of Christ be together? When I come back, will I find faith? It is about faith. It is about faith. It is not about the way we dress. It is not the way we address the people. It is not our eloquence. It is about faith. And there are seven pillars. When I see Jesus asking this, I see seven pillars that the church of today ought to be standing on. The first one is the pillar of prayer. Jesus is looking for a praying church. Huh. Look at the other person and ask them, are you a prayerful person? But when I look at you, they were talking about small churches. But there is a church and a temple who is you yourself. So you don't need 70 people to pray. The Holy Spirit asks you, don't you know? Don't you know you are the temple of the Holy Spirit? And therefore, if you are temple of the Holy Spirit, you are the headquarter of our God. And any time you want God, any time, he is in you. And all you need, he a prayer away. So you must be a praying church. Say we must be a praying church. Of course, I am pre preaching to the bishops because I know this is a prayer ministry. And I'm so thankful that one, uh, uh, my sister Wangoji, you chose prayers. It is the power that you cause your family to stand. It is the power that you cause your relationships to stand. It is the power that gives you victory. I remember we were going to 40 counties and we were praying for God to give us victory. Did he give victory? Did he not? It was a product of prayer. Our president today, every time he stands, he will tell you he's a product of prayer. So prayer answers everything. And if there is a woman or a man to pray, there is a God to answer. So if you can speak to your neighbor, tell them, if you are willing to pray, there is a God to answer. And this God is not a respecter of persons. All he wants is when you pray, you have faith in what you pray. And don't doubt. I never doubted when I was a, a maid. One day, it was so bad in that house. And as I was cleaning the house, I told God, one day, I would like to have a house bigger than this one. Where I have very many workers. And you can imagine you are made. So I prayed. And I told him, when you will bless me and give me houses and give me everything that I've asked you, I will serve you. And this God is a faithful God. A prayer of a child of eight, ten years there. He answered the prayer. So one day, God has given me a husband and a good one. God has given me a job and a good one because I worked in a bank for, for 16 years. God has given me children and I'm walking into one of the rooms of my own house and not one but two and God reminded me remember <laughs> you said when I shall bless you you will serve me and that's how I resigned 
from working from the bank to serve God. He has been faithful. My husband asked me, are you sure you want to leave that job? Wait a little bit. You see whether you, you change your mind. Because what will you be doing when you leave such a job? You are in senior management and then you come, you start some interesting business here. And I left the job and I started furniture shop along Langata Road and I used to remove those chairs outside and the people who used to work with me, they used to laugh at me. And that gave me an opportunity to serve my family and as well to serve church. So I used to go halfway in church and then I'll go and work. And one day, say one day, on the side of the road, a mzungu comes and sits on one of the seats that I had made. And this is true because many people say that what we testimonies we give are, are, are not true. Ask Bishop Kepa. He has bought furniture from me for a long time. That is the truth. <laughs> for many years, I was in that furniture business for 25 years. And so the Muzungu comes and says, can we partner with you? I say, partner with you. And this Mozungu was the MD of Uchumi. <laughs> and then when he told me who he was and where, I said, yes, we can partner. <laughs> and he gave me six shops to go and display our furniture. And from there, destiny changed. Why are you clapping like you are jealous? Pick up my coffee, sour, sour. What you celebrate also comes to you. So this God, who a child can pray and answer prayers, is the same God today. When you pray, it may delay, but in due time, say in due time, which is now, it shall come to pass. I prophesy, it shall come to pass. I prophesy, it shall come to pass. So the church today must be a prayerful church. Number two. It must be a believing church. You cannot pray without faith. You must believe in this God. You must know him. Because you cannot believe on who you don't know. And you cannot pray to a man. You cannot speak or have a relationship with a God you don't know. The problem is that you are always knowing the God of evangelist Goji. You know, there are sons of Skiva. Skiva was not an ordinary man. Skiva was a priest and a serious priest and had seven sons. And so they heard that there was this God and there was this Jesus who was healing. And they decided to go as sons of priests and of course with the name of Jesus. And when they went out there, the rest is history. You know they went back naked. <laughs> yes, they were beaten by demons. And that's why the church of today must be a, a, a church that is full of faith. A church that knows who their God is. A God that has a relationship with God. A church that can stand and surely say, I know Jesus of Nazareth. This is the Son of God. He's the one who died and rose again to the glory of God the Father. 
and this Jesus Christ is my Savior. How can you believe if you have not confessed? So the church must be a believing church. Not that one which only sings and celebrates and dances and you jump up and down and you don't know what God is saying in that season and in that time. Ask your neighbor, do you know what is going, God is saying in this season? <laughs> God is saying the world has been waiting for the manifestation of the sons and daughters of God because they are in bondage and they, they would like the bondage to be broken. That is the work of the church. Faith. A believing church. The other one is, say, a loving church, number three. A what? A loving church because God is love. If you cannot love another one another, you are wasting your time. You can believe, you can have faith, you can work miracles, but when you go before God, if you did not stand by the pillar of love, I can tell you, Jehovah will ask you, <laughs> when I was hungry, can you finish for me? When I was thirsty, when I was naked, when I was in prison, when I was sick, and then he will leave you to, dis to get to the path to hell. <laughs> Today we have a church that is full of hatred. A church that is full of malice, gossip, slander. We just want to come and to be entertained. A church that does not love God. A church that just wants to be me, I, and myself. A church that thinks God is a supermarket. God is not a supermarket. You enter there with a list. That is a prayer. Oh God, about this. Oh God, about this. Oh God, about the other. Oh God, about the other. You represent the list. God said, seek ye first the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added unto you. So a loving church is everything. Do you have love in your heart? Hmm. The other day, of course, it is not in Kenya, it is outside Kenya. A pastor is under attack. Hmm. And the brothers who are there celebrating because he thinks if the brother goes down, you will rise. Let me tell you. Once the brother goes down, they will come for you, sister. The moment that sister goes down, they will come for you, brother. May the church arise and love one another. Because love is God. We must be the brothers and sisters keeper. Otherwise, we are going to be destroyed. We are one body. You cannot love one finger and hate the other one. Every finger has got its work in the body. Some of the things that you see in your body are very small. But Jehovah says, I left a body. When I come back, will I find faith in that body? Let's love one another. The fourth one is a serving church. <laughs> My goodness. We have a church that doesn't serve. Do you know, Reverend, today, if you look at the people who are wearing as servicemen and women, they are almost maybe 
10%, and if you are lucky, 20%. Everybody else is here on Sunday and Tuesday and Friday to be served. And God is looking for servants. Servanthood is everything. And today, when you come to my office, you can see my minders are there. They are sitting. I told them I'm a servant. If you go to my church, I still collect the offerings. And yes, and I still count it. Just the way I was doing. Yeah. I must serve. God did not elevate me to become a master. He is the master. And I am his servant. That is why I said I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. That is why I'm standing here to preach this Jesus, my master Jesus, and I'm his servant. And I'm a dangerous servant. <laughs> Very serious. If you want to grow, and if you want to be elevated, you must be a servant. Every office that God places you is for servanthood. You were supposed to be a servant. Jesus knelt down and washed the disciples' feet. And he said, do as I have done. Who is this Christian that cannot serve another? You are not a Christian. A Christian is a servant. And the master is Jehovah himself. And the power behind such a Christian in such a church is the Holy Spirit who enables him to serve. So desire to serve. Wherever you are watching me from, desire to serve. Five. Pillar number five. And may grace abide. It is a worshiping church. <laughs> you must be a worshiper. Because God thrives in praises and the worship of his people. If you cannot worship God, there's one thing God cannot do for himself. He cannot worship himself. And therefore, that particular aspect of a church is one of the greatest and the very high ranking pillar in a church to worship your God in truth and in spirit. Number six, it is a spirit-filled church. It is God who calls. It is not man who calls you. And it is not man who started a good work in you. It is God who called you. And many are called, but few are chosen. And you are the chosen one. Say I'm the chosen one. You are chosen by God and filled with his spirit so that you can go and minister to the world. It is your work to go and minister to the world. Say, it is my business to go and minister. The power of ministry, it is not in certificates. The power of the church today, it is not and I'm, let me first correct this, because many people, when you say this, they misunderstand. Going to theological college is very important. Having education is ultimate. Because you have to be proved, and you need knowledge. But when come to serving God, you can have your PhD and not have God. You can have your certificate and become the one who is destroying the body of Christ. And therefore, you need the spirit of the living God to embody you 
together with the, the knowledge which God has given you. And let me even go further to advocate for knowledge and understanding of the word of God. Because some of us, we are preaching God in ignorance. In Hosea, he says, my people perish because of what? And that is the only thing people ever read. If you go down there, it says, because you rejected knowledge, I also reject your service. Father, God says, not only do I reject your service as my priest, I also will reject your children. It is a bad thing not to have knowledge. But knowledge, I can tell you, does not only come from the formal learning. There is an informal learning where you can take the Bible because there are many people may not get the opportunity to be invited into the theological colleges. But they can sit in the Bible studies across the nation. And they can sit in the ministry of the word. And they get the word. And the Holy Spirit will fill them with the understanding. For it is he that teaches all truth. And without him, it doesn't matter how many certificates you are. It will not work. I want to tell you that says something that this church of Jesus Christ must have. We are in number what? Number seven. A word preaching church. <laughs> that is the greatest commission in Matthew 28. Go ye and make disciples. It was never go sit ye. And it has become the church of the sitters. Yes, they sit. And yes, they are fed. And yes, they have been filled with the Holy Spirit. They are prayerful. They have everything. But they never go out to witness. The church today, you must go therefore. Go is not sitting. Go is, if I tell you go, you will not sit on your seat, right? We must learn to read the word of God, for faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. And those who love their God, they shall do great and mighty exploits. And the God who started a good work for this church <laughs> will finish it until the day of Christ, if we are prayerful, if we are Bible-believing church, if we are loving church, if we are serving church, if you are worshiping church, if you are spirit-filled world, church, and a word-preaching church. Now the greatest nightmare for me as a pastor is that I'm teaching and we are preaching, bishop, and we are preaching to the pod not in the ocean. Sell fish. We feed them. Feed, 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 feed. They eat, they eat, they eat, they eat. They get fat, they get fat. And that's it. Wow, God. <laughs> You've been preaching to a church that was in January 2000. Why is it 2000 now? If every person went and brought you two people in one year, they witnessed to two and brought them for you to come and preach here, how big will this church be? Yeah? Answer me. I'm just looking at an example that this church is 2,000. If each one of you went out and witnessed to two people and brought them here, even if you are not able to give the right word, and you brought them to see your mother here and your patron here, 
How many people will be here next Sunday? 6,000. Huh. If you are not making disciples, that is why nobody wants our God. How can they know this God unless you preach him? How would you know I was a preacher if I did not come here and witness the way I am doing? We want witnessing church. We want a preaching church. We want a serving church. We want a loving church. A loving and a preaching and serving church. It is that one who is able to see and be affected by the perishing world out there. You are in Nairobi. Go to the streets of Nairobi and tell me what is there. And let me conclude with Galatians 3, verse 1 to 5. I'm very sure this is what Paul is still talking to us about. Read for us. I am also part of it. Oh! Bob, whose eyes Jesus was clearly portrayed among you as crucified. This only I want to learn from you. Did you receive the Spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Are you so foolish, having begun in the Spirit? Are you now being perfected in the flesh? Have you suffered so many things in vain, if indeed was in vain? Therefore, he who has surprised the spirit to you and works miracles among you, does he by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? I'm looking at the church today and I'm asking myself, did we begin in faith? We do great mighty works in the first and second revival. And when the third one is just about to come, when the rapture is so near, we are going to be found sleeping and without faith. Oh, God forbid! God forbid that we should be found without faith. God help us that we are not going to be foolish. Foolish enough to serve God and that at the final end we find ourselves heading to hell because we are not preaching the gospel. The gospel is only one that Jesus Christ, the son of the living God, descended from heaven and came upon this earth. His business to be on this earth was to die so that you may live, was to die that you may be healed. And he came to exchange his righteousness for your filthiness. And unless you repent and give your life to God, let me tell you, you are wasting your time. You can dance until tomorrow. It's a waste of time. Church today, it is about salvation. Church today, it is about going out there and saving the dying souls. For the harvest is plenty. But there are few laborers. But Jehovah God is saying, the church today, I'm speaking to you. You are neither hot nor are you cold. <laughs> you are lukewarm. And I'll spit you out of my mouth. Because you will come before me. And you will be talking about the miracles you performed and everything. And you did not love one another. And it will be of no use. Hell will be waiting for you. I know maybe you wanted to hear more about big cars. And you will receive them. 
about houses. But let me tell you the houses come because Jehovah God wants you to have a room so that you can bring those who are shelterless. God is looking for someone who is willing to go to the prisons and give hope to the prisoners and speak the word of faith to the dying generation out there. A generation that is calling itself the Alpha and the Z generation. A generation that is seeking to be associated with God. But we are here very happy and comfortable within the four walls of the church. You must go out, rescue, save, and bring them to God. He's only looking for one person willing to do it. And this is my altar call for you today. Whoever wants to answer to the call of the new church, because there is going to be a new church, let me tell you, there is going to be a new church. This is going to be a church of, that is prayerful. This is going to be a church that is loving and believing church. This is going to be a worshiping church, a spirit-filled church, and a word-preaching church. God bless you.